This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon coming from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, The Exxon Broadcast Network, and our growing family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Australia, Asia, India, Africa, and Europe. I'd like to welcome our newest broadcast affiliate in the Philippines, Star Cable Inc. If you'd like to give us a call, our toll-free number is worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. That's 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour, Exonation, is Tom Justin. And uh, Tom brings an eclectic background from the arts to business to the world of spirituality and metaphysics to his many audiences around the world. In business, he's consulted for Fortune 500 companies to startups. His personal coaching client list ranges from world-renowned authors, business and religious leaders, entrepreneurs, to entertainment stars. He's he's, uh, run companies, helped others to start their own and consulted or spoken for such notables as American Airlines, Entrepreneur Magazine, Nikon, uh, Petrolane, and many others. The tremendous personal power that resides in each and every one of us and our ability to manifest this power is the cornerstone of Tom's speeches, seminars, and websites. He's been a professional communicator for 25 years, speaking to and training tens of thousands of people on the topic of personal, business, and spiritual development. His topics are as diverse as marketing and internet strategies, creative writing, to how to use your intuition in everyday life. He was also a guest lecturer at UCLA's Experimental College for a six-week series entitled Power Mind a course designed to increase awareness and intuition. As a researcher and actualizer of the powers of the mind, Tom is past president of the Society for Psychical Research of Beverly Hills, California. And joining me now is Tom. Justin, Tom, welcome to the X-Zone. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me. Tell me, Tom, when did you realize that you had this very powerful gift? Well... You know, I, I, I guess when I was a kid, I had hunches a lot. Mm-hmm. I would I would go to the phone before it rang sometimes and uh, meet people that my dad was doing business with and have certain feelings and express my feelings about them before I knew much about them. And it was just kind of normal. And then later I realized that we all have intuition of some kind or another. It's just how we choose to use it. Now, Tom, uh, do you believe that each and every one of us has the uh, gift of intuition, but we just don't use it yet? Absolutely. I've taught 
hundreds, maybe, I don't know, thousands of people how to use their intuitive click, and uh, which is what I call it, mm-hmm. because we all have it. We all we can all look back at times when we had a hunch or a feeling. We didn't know why, and it turned out right, and it didn't, yeah. we didn't think it would, but it happens to all of us, and we can use it consistent, consistently if we're aware of it. Why is it that there are those people who are listening to this show this very moment around the world who may have had that gut instinct, they may have had that feeling that something just wasn't wrong, and yet they refuse to acknowledge it as intuition. Sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it's our upbringing. You know, oh, don't be silly. Mm-hmm. I, I knew a woman uh, who's an extremely gifted intuitive. In fact, she was a psychic. And coming up as a child, it was repressed. I mean, her parents said, now stop that. Or don't do that. Or that's mm-hmm. weird. Or, you know. Why would you do that? I mean, they, they, they could not admit that she had something special going on. And it wasn't until she was into her 30s when she realized that she had this, you know, this real gift that she could help other people with. And so, but she was repressed for most of her life. Tom, stand by. With- you and I have to take our commercial break. Exonation. Nation, Tom Justin is our very special guest this hour. A special website, www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute break. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, everyone. I was uh, speaking to Brian O'Day a little earlier today. He's the uh, one of the co-executive producers of uh, Paragators. I worked with Brian on Creepy Canada, and uh, Brian and I are going to be working on Paragators together along with John Reynolds. So if you'd like to find out what is the latest news on the Paragators TV show, just visit the website www.paragators.org. That's www.paragators.org. My guest this hour is Tom Justin, a website for Exxon Nation to visit www.yourintuitiveclick.com. Now, when people go to the uh, your website, intuitive, yourintuitiveclick.com, Tom, wow, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Right. Uh, what, what are they going to What are they going to find there? Well, we have a special report called um, "Your Inner Wizard," which covers the technique of your intuitive click. It will teach them how to use their intuition on an, on an everyday basis. It's the very basic primer to mm-hmm. uh, to what I teach in my seminars. And that's at www.yourintuitiveclick.com. Right. Tom, maybe maybe we should start by asking you the, the very simple question. How do you define intuition? Well, Rob, it's, it's that hunch or that feeling that you get and you don't know why. You know, mm-hmm. that's where we hear the gut. You know, I just had a gut feeling or... 
don't know why I felt that way, and I decided not to do it, and or I decided to do something, and it turned out to be great. I didn't think I'd like it. Uh, I met somebody. Mm-hmm. They looked great. Everything about them was wonderful, but there was something. I just had that gut instinct or that prickly feeling in the back of my neck wasn't right, and they turned out to be wrong. You know, and I thought they were so right, but they were they were not. They were not good people. I didn't. They looked like it. I believed they were, but inside I thought, no, this isn't this isn't right. So we all have that from time to time, and the and the the key is to be consistent with it and to to use that as a tool in your everyday life. Now, in your writing, you mentioned that a lot of very well known and accomplished people credit the use of their intuition for success. Can you share some stories with us? Well, Donald Trump said publicly that he used his intuition to build his multi billion dollar empire. I mean, he 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 credits his intuition. Uh, Oprah Winfrey says that she uses it. Einstein. Uh, talks a lot about intuition and how he uses intuition, uh, used intuition. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edison talked about it, and the as I started looking more, you know, more into intuition and public figures, I found more and more people used it. I know a lot of uh, worked with a lot of people in Hollywood, show business, uh, successful people in the arts, and almost to a person, they made some of their most significant breakthroughs in their careers by using their intuition. And it's, again, a lot of people don't, they don't call it that, they don't think of it as that, but it was like they went on instinct. They call it instinct, which I guess it really is. I mean, it's part of our human makeup that we have an instinct. And, but we, you know, we're flooded with information. We're pl- flooded with data. We're flooded with uh, hypnotic marketing techniques that kind of guide us into doing things. And we become unconscious. And when we become unconscious as a culture, we become a danger to ourselves and to others because we're allowing other people to guide us. So part of using your intuition is to create a higher awareness and a higher uh, a higher self-awareness and a higher awareness of what's being done or attempted to be done to us and toward us. I understand that one of the most dramatic results of listening to your very own intuition came when you decided not to take a flight one day. What happened? I uh, was flying back and forth from from Los Angeles to San Diego. I kept a car in both cities, Mm -hmm. and I frequently would fly down on a Monday morning and uh, spend all you know either a few days or the week. And I had a on Sunday morning. I woke up. I scheduled a fly out Monday morning. I had a busy Sunday. I had a first date that night with a woman I was looking forward to being with. I had lunch and appointments, uh, lunch and appointment and meetings through the day. And I had this overwhelming feeling to drive to San Diego on Sunday. And I picked up the phone and called some friends in in Newport Beach, and I said, hey, I'm going to drive to San Diego. Are you free for lunch? They said yes, and I cancel all my appointments. And while I'm doing this, I'm Mm -hmm. talking to myself saying, this is nuts. You've got a busy day. You You don't need to drive down today. And it was like this this uh, schizophrenic dialogue with myself, like, no, I got, I'm going to drive down today. That's all there is to it. I drove down, and the next morning, uh, PSA Flight 182 had a mid-air cor- collision and crashed and killed all aboard. My heavens. And absolutely one of the most incredible things that's ever happened to me or maybe not happened to me in my life. And I didn't have a fear feeling. It wasn't like, oh, my God, I can't fly. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm going to drive down today. I'm not going to go down tomorrow. And it didn't make any conscious sense. But I obeyed it. But it was not fear. I just, I said, I just went, I finally, I just went with it. I would imagine that that, that that traveling around the world like you do, Tom, and speaking, speaking to thousands upon thousands of people delivering your, your lectures and your seminars, you must hear validation uh, of people using their intuition all the time. Yeah, there are, you know, I wish a long time ago that I had started making, you know, literally carrying a recorder with me and recording some of these things because I just got, you know, I've, I've had so many stories and I've had clients and, and I, whenever I get a, whenever I get a coaching client, a personal mm-hmm. client, uh, which I don't have a lot of time for anymore, but I always talk to them about, uh, or bring it up uh, it's kind of subtly sometimes because not everybody who retains my services, especially in the business world, knows that I'm that I work off of intuition. And uh, so I'll get in the conversation and ask them about their intuition. And to a person, I've never had anybody say they've never had an intuitive 
hit. Some people come out of come out of their their intuitive closet where they didn't want to talk about it with anybody mm-hmm. else, and all of a sudden they open up and say, "God, I never tell anybody this, but here's some of the things that happened to me." And I hear it all the time, and uh, and have heard it for years. Now, Tom, you've used the term "woo-woo" from time to time, and I use that quite often. What it, what do you mean by "woo-woo"? Well, when I break intuition down, there are there are two basic areas that make perfect sense. There's a conscious mind, a knowledge that you have, mm-hmm. and sometimes you just didn't think about it, and it comes up, and it's helpful, and it almost seems intuitive. Then there's unconscious, the subconscious mind, which has cataloged everything that's ever happened to us in our life, and it comes up, and, and that that brings up an intuitive hunch from time to time. For instance, uh, in the intuitive, on the uh, subconscious level. Whenever you've been lied to in your life, and you know, and you later found out about it, you've cataloged that person's physiological picture, their their tone of voice, their face, their figures, their body gestures. We call this body language, and you can learn the techniques. Mm-hmm. But we already know the techniques because our conscious, our subconscious mind brings it up when somebody's lying to us, and we get this feeling like well, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't make sense, but we're really, it's really telling us that. These certain kinds of movements or twitches or or subtle features that are that are facing us are the same kinds of things that we've seen in other lives. So we don't know we don't know consciously why we feel that way, but that's a subconscious mind telling us that. Then the third thing is is what happened to me on that flight to San Diego. It was a it, it was woo woo. I mean, where does that come from? Why did I have that absolute? Uh, incredible push to drive down a day early when I had a full day and I had a wonderful day planned. Um, and I, I mean, I couldn't get off of that. I've had mm-hmm. many things like that happen in my life, but that, that comes from, you know, <laughs> there's no other word for it for me except woo woo. Why would that be that way? And I've obeyed that feeling a number of times and I've also not obeyed it with, uh, not so dramatic results, obviously, but, um, but it's just woo. I mean, you don't. I don't know where that stuff comes from. We can extrapolate it and take our personal feelings in all in all kinds of levels. But it it's there, and we are connected to source. And if you want to take it into a religious category, that's fine. If you want to take it into a spiritual category, that's fine. But there is a source that gives us that kind of information and that kind of data, and it's available to all of us. Now, Tom, can interpreting our intuition actually be misunderstood? Sure, because uh, you know if we're dealing with someone and and everything seems fine, mm-hmm. and the people around us like that person, I've I've been in business situations before where the person I was dealing with looked perfect. I mean, I had a I had a client once, and they wanted to hire this guy as a senior vice president for a very significant company, and everything about him, including his resume, his letters of introduction, and whatever, just looked perfect, and. When I told the CEO of the company there's something not right, I think you should check him, you know, check him much more deeply than you've done. And he he didn't do it. He said, "Are you kidding? This guy's perfect, and we can get him now." Well, to make a long story short, uh, two months later, the FBI picked this guy up and carted him away. Oh my gosh! It was not what he could be. But nobody around me, everybody thought I was nuts, and they said, "Why? You know, <laughs> why are you saying this about?" John, whatever his name was, and right. I said, I don't know, but I think you should just check him out. I just, I just have a feeling. So that can that can be disruptive. I, it almost cost me that business relationship. Uh, fortunately, we had a long enough relationship before that to keep it going. But I think had I been there a short time, um, they probably would have just uh, terminated my contract because I was adamant. What did they say after the FBI came and picked this guy up? Uh. <laughs> How did you know? You know what? Yeah. And you know, and I had a discussion. I said, "We all have intuitive feelings. There was something about this guy that just didn't set right." And you know, they kind of accepted that, but but they were they were kind of in 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 uh, suspended disbelief, I guess, because they could not get past that that sense that you know, why was I so sure? And I didn't. And those this is some years ago. And I didn't talk about uh, in, intuition mm-hmm. in the way in the public way that I do now. So I just said we all have intuition, and that was my intuition. My intuition is that I've got to take a commercial break. You and I will be <laughs> back on the other side of this news break. Exonation Tom Justin's our very special guest. 
Visit www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. And once again, if you'd like to find out what the latest news from the world of Paragators is... And what we're doing later on tonight is we're going to start putting up some of the experts that are going to be part of the Paragators team at www.paragators.org. That's www.paragators.org. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network and on the Exxon Broadcast Network. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Tom Justin is our special guest, Exxon Nation, www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. Tom, uh, over the... During the first uh, segment of the show, you used the words intuitive coach a couple of times. And I was wondering if you could tell us what an intuitive coach does. Well, when, when, I, when I work with people on, an, on a one-on-one basis, mm-hmm. well, even companies, part of what happens is, is the use of intuition, the conscious, conscious use of intuition to help these individuals get through Whatever they're they're going through, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an analyst, but it's just that that sense of assisting them in uh, without necessarily having enough knowledge to uh, to be able to make comments or th- or give thoughts, mm-hmm. uh, you know, without having that information, you sometimes just know certain things, and you can kind of get to the you can cut to the quick a lot faster when you use your intuition with someone. Tom, how can an intuitive coach help uh, a business person or a student or or another professional in their lives? You're basically looking at their situation, where they're at, and you, you get a sense of the feeling of that person. Sometimes you pick up an emotional sense. Uh, I've had a lot of clients, for instance, corporate clients, CEOs, who were, were looking at outside sources for the cause of the corporate problems. And yet you could see that from an emotional level, they were blocking what was happening in the company. This is true for individuals as well. But it was harder to see uh, just with the knowledge that you would have of that corporate client. But the CEO, the the person, the man or woman directing the company was causing all kinds of, of, for lack of a better term, energy interrupts. And when you can corral that energy and bring it down and refocus it with someone and, and guide them, um, they can redirect that energy in a much more positive way, both with their with their decisions as well as how they handle their people. Now, y- your first experience as an intuitive coach is, is an interesting story, and it had to do with a major TV star, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was just. It was funny how you know. I was in my early 20s. I think I was 21 or 22, and I didn't know how how I was getting this information. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were just sitting down having coffee. I was on the on the set of their TV show, and 
and uh, something came up, and he he was talking about how his managers, uh, something about his manager, and I started naming off some things that they were doing, and he said, "How did you know that?" And I, you know, I was flummoxed. I didn't know, and I said, "Well, just just kind of from what you've told me," and he said, "I didn't." say a word about that. He said, that's my problem with these guys, is that they're whatever they were doing that I named off mm-hmm. that they were they were causing him some, some problems in his career and things that he didn't agree with. And that really started my my coaching career before we ever called it coaching. Um, and, and he recommended, he, he would meet with me on a, on a fairly regular basis. And uh, he was not a very well-known star at the time. He was actually co-starring on two TV shows, and then he later became uh, uh, Colonel Henry Blake on MASH. His name was McQueen Stevenson. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, uh, and, and <laughs> so it was, just, it was just, that's how it started. And he, would, he called other people and said, you got to talk to this guy. And I'm, you know, they look at me, and they, I'm sure they're looking at me thinking, well, this is a kid. What does he know? And I didn't know much. But it was just that the, the intuition was allowed to be turned on, and mm-hmm. I was allowed to just go with the flow, and, and I just had to be unconcerned about uh, about what people thought of it or what people thought of the, what, the reason that I was saying certain things. Now, I, I know you went to work for a number of people in the entertainment industry. Uh, Bruce Willis even thanked you along with others in a full-page ad in Variety. What was that about? That was really amazing. Bruce was uh, was just coming up in his first. Uh, it was just ending his his television show, which mm-hmm. was what made him a star, and he was getting a lot of offers for scripts and things. And we were introduced by a mutual friend and sat one evening together for some period of time. And I gave him some suggestions on how to pick a script, because part of the problem that he had was he was being offered millions of dollars for all these different scripts, and some of them were big directors, and, and he didn't like some of the scripts, and he didn't trust some of the people he was involved with, and I really basically gave him the intuitive click information uh, so that he could make these choices himself. And again, he had management and agents who were more interested in the immediate buck. I shouldn't say that. I, I don't know that that's the case, but that was, his, that was a concern that, is often, that actors often have. So when you've got other people making choices for you, in other words, he only saw scripts that were screened by them. And so just in how he could make that decision and how he could ask them questions about what was going on um, opened up the door for him, evidently, to a wider angle because he was able to, to make his choices without, without the stress that he was expressing to me at the time. And then uh, a few months later when he won the Emmy, uh, which I had nothing to do with. He was already nominated for that. But he thanked a bunch of people on a full page, in a full page ad in the Daily Variety and Hollywood Reporter, and I was shocked to be amongst them. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Now, you say that you can show others how to use their intuitive click in five minutes or less, right? Right. Go. <laughs> the, uh, the, the feeling that we talked about before, when you know that you had a hunch and it didn't seem like the right thing, but it turned out to be correct, mm-hmm. you have, you know, we discussed it before, you have that physical feeling. Right. And you have a mental feeling. And when you go back and match those two feelings together, any time of the future that you have that same feeling, you can have a relative assurance that you're, that you're onto something. It takes a while to trust it. It takes a while to separate the wish from the reality. Uh, and it's practice, and it's getting into depth. I... But in that in that short period of time, right now, with that information, you can use your intuition. You can start to ask yourself a question: Is this a good decision? Should I do this now? And as you ask yourself that question, you start to you will maybe perhaps start to feel that physical and mental feeling, and maybe not. So you have to practice on it, and it's just in the awareness, the very fact that you're aware that you have or you might have intuition. You, you do have it. Everybody has it, as you know. But everybody has it. But if, they, if they're not sure and they just start becoming aware of it, of the possibility on a daily basis, more and more that will come up. You get that feeling. You get that physical and mental feeling. And like I said, it's practice. I do a six-series session, a six, six sessions uh, on the Internet called The Wizard's Edge. And the whole 
purpose of that is showing people how to get the edge in life by using their intuition. But that little that little that little uh, technique mm-hmm. will will guide you a great deal in using your daily your intuition on a daily basis. Tell me, what's the difference between a hunch and an intuitive click? Well, uh, the the hunch can be the intuitive click, um, and and it's. Uh, it's it's the feeling. Sometimes there's a wishful feeling. You know, it's like that's why it's difficult. To, I live in Las Vegas, and I mm-hmm. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't trust myself to go to a roulette table and bet on black or uh, what a uh, black or red. I guess it is. I'm not a. I'm not much of a gambler. And uh, but I've 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 used it in gambling. But it's when you purposefully use it, you get that wish like, oh man, I really would like to win this jackpot or I'd like to win the turn of the wheel or what have you. Uh, it gets muddled. And the, the more you need that win, the more muddled it gets. It has to be a very relaxed sense and feeling and allow that feeling to come and not force it. So the hunch can be, well, the hunch can be right on. The hunch can, but it's just you just have to go back to that physiological feeling, that mental and physical feeling, to start to gauge it properly. Let's take it one step further. What's the difference between a hunch, intuitive click, and wishful thinking? Well, wishful thinking is that thing that, you know, I'd really like to have this. And so, oh, yeah, I feel good about that. But mm-hmm. well, you feel good about it sometimes because you really want to have it. So you might do things, a person might do something that's kind of outside the realm of their reality, and it's, it's because they just they want it so badly that they, they tease, themselves, tease themselves into thinking that they're actually having an intuitive hit, and it's not happening. Hmm. Um, there's a risk-reward ratio in everything that we do. Every decision we make has a consequence, positive or negative, and we have to take that, co- that potential consequence and weigh that when we make a decision. So even if your intuitive sense tells you to do something, you have to look at the risk-reward ratio and, and ask yourself, okay, what's the risk and what's the potential reward, and, and am I willing to do it? So that way you kind of get away from that wishful thinking aspect, and the more you get used to using your intuition, the more likely you are to be able to trust it and use it effectively, but not forcefully. You don't have to force it. It comes to you when you call. Tom Justin's our special guest, Exxon Nation www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. All right, Tom, where does logic fit into this entire picture that you and I have been painting over the last uh, hour? Logic is um, is a little scary because sometimes we go with information. You know, logic, if, if you come from a certain kind of a background, this isn't logical. What mm-hmm. we're talking about may not seem logical. So you have to define logic for yourself. Are you willing to look outside of the parameters of, the, of, the, of what you've learned in your life that there might be something more? I call myself an open-minded skeptic. I've been presented, especially when I was working in in research, uh, you get all kinds of things. People come with all kinds of stories and abilities and potential abilities, and you just have to have that open-minded skepticism so that you kind of get logic out of it, and if it feels right, you take a look at it, take a serious look at it, and give yourself that risk-reward ratio of whether or not to go further and deeper into, uh, into that that which might be important for you or for your family, your business. Tom, let's say somebody is is in dire straits and they're, they're, they're presented with, a, let's call it an opportunity, that has immediate rewards. Is it possible that their desire, their need for an immediate reward will override the feeling of their, of their intuitive click? Yeah, you hit it right on the nail there, Rob. Because it really is a, it really is something that can that can uh, can cause big problems in your life. Because you're looking at that, ah, I've got to have it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that wishful thinking we talked about yeah. before. And oh, well, okay, it feels good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. So yeah, I mean that can really that can really screw it up. So it so what do, what do we do? How do we? Is there an override mechanism that we can? tell our system to use is it or is it just slow down think 
Well, slow down and think a little bit. Use that risk-reward ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, get the trust your intuition. Use it enough. Learn how to use it. You know, it's not something that you, you know, I can teach the technique in five minutes, but it really is a practice event, a series of, uh, of series of methods and techniques to get yourself involved so that it becomes a natural resource that's available to you. It, you may not, it may not come to you. You may have to call it up mm -hmm. and ask for the information and then be able to trust yourself and use all of those devices. Use the risk reward ratio. Um, I, I have a, an acronym for fear. You know, I, I, the acronym I used to hear all the time was first evaluate, I mean, was false evidence appearing real. Well, sometimes fear is a good thing. And I would say that my acronym is what I, what I changed it to was first evaluate according to risk. So you take that risk reward ratio and look at it and say, all right, this is something I'm willing to move forward with. Stand by, Tom. We've got to take our final break for this hour. www.yourintuitiveclick.com. My guest is Tom Justin. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Tom Justin is our very special guest this hour, www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. Now, Tom, you developed a course that anyone can use to strengthen their intuition. How did you come to call it The Wizard's Edge? Well, it's evolved over a number of years, and, and it really it was in a conversation with a client one time, uh, in fact, at a seminar, and she said, boy, this just really gives me the edge, the thing that, you know, the, the, that edge in life that's so important, and I always hear about people having the edge, and I never knew what it was, and she says, I think it's, I think it's the ability to use your intuition, and your inner wizard, which is a website also that you get when you uh, you get the information on when you get your special report at yourintuitiveclick.com, uh, talks about getting the edge and, and using intuition to get the edge in life. So uh, I, I met a I met under very mysterious circumstances a woman one time who told me that her job in life was to train wizards and that anybody could be a wizard. By declaration, we all have that ability, that innate ability to bring up wisdom and information that can help us, ourselves and others. So that's, I started calling it your inner wizard, which is the facility. Everything starts, all success and failure starts at the same place from within. So the extrapolation to that was the wizard's edge, hence the title. <laughs> that's the long, that's the short answer, actually. Now, I know that you have two big announcements uh, for people on tonight's call. What are they? I have uh, one big one and one small one. Um, the big one is if you go to um, yourintuitiveclick.com and get that special report, it will take you then to a page 
for you get a hundred dollar discount. The course, the Wizard's Edge, is normally one hundred ninety seven dollars for the six session course with a thirty day money back guarantee. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're knocking a hundred dollars off, wow. it, so it's ninety four dollars U S. And a small announcement is the Wizard's Edge. I mean, the uh, your intuitive click dot mm-hmm. com will give you that special report at no charge, plus access to a lot of other. Uh, information that uh, you may or may not want to take advantage of. Tom, we've got about 50 seconds left. What would you like to leave uh, leave the people listening to you around the planet with? Trust yourself and trust your intuition and learn to trust it. I mean, it, it's there. It's available to you. Allow it to come up. Experiment with it on, on, on things that aren't, mm-hmm. uh, aren't dangerous in your life and just get a sense of it. Feel it. Watch it because it's there. You can use it every single day of your life in everything from relationships to money to jobs to careers everything uh, creativity it heightens your creativity tremendously when you learn how to use your intuition and you just have to be aware that it's there that's the first step tom i want to thank you so much for joining us here in the exxon tonight and i look forward to the next time you and i meet here in the exxon me too thank you so much rob take care tom justin has been my very special guest of this hour Don't forget this very important website, www.yourintuitiveclick.com. That's www.yourintuitiveclick.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network and on the Exxon Broadcast Network. We'll be back. Don't go away. (laughs) 